हेलो टू ऑल माई स्टोरी लवर्स वेलकम बैक इन स्टोरी टाइम चैनल टूडे इज अवर स्टोरी नेम इज द रेड राइस ग्रैनरी रिटर्न बाय सुधा मूर्ति एंड टेकन फ्रॉम हाउ आई थॉट माई ग्रैंड मदर टू रीड एंड अदर स्टोरीज नाउ बिफोर गो टू द स्टोरी प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब नाउ लेट्स गो टू द स्टोरी Every year our country has to face natural disasters in some form it may be an earthquake in gujarat floods in orissa or a drought in karnataka in a poor country these calamities create havoc in the course of my work i have found that after such a calamities many people like to donate money or materials to relief funds we assume that most donations come from rich people but that is not true on contrary people from the middle class and the lower middle class help more rarely do rich people participate wholeheartedly a few years back i was invited to reputed company in bangalore to deliver a lecture on corporate social responsibility giving a speech is easy but i was not sure how many people in audience would really understand the speech and change themselves after my talk was over i met many young girls and boys it was an affluent company the employees were well off and well dressed they were all very emotional after the lecture madam we buy so many clothes every month can we donate our old clothes to those people who are affected by the earthquake can you coordinate and send them some of them offered other things we have grown up children we would like to give their old toys and some vessels i was very pleased at the reaction it reminded me of the incident in ramayana where during the construction of the bridge between india and lanka every squirrel help sri rama by bringing a handful of sand please send your bags to my office i will see that they reach the right persons within a week my office was flooded with hundreds of bags i was proud that my lecture had proven so effective one sunday along with my assistants i opened the bags what we saw left us amazed and shocked the bags were brimming over with all kinds of junk piles of high heeled slippers some of them without the pair torn undergarments unwashed shirt cheap and transparent sarees toys which had neither shape nor color unusable bed sheets aluminum vessels and broken cassettes were soon piled in front of us like a mountain they were only a few good shirts sarees and usable materials it was apparent that instead of sending the material to the garbage dump or the khabari wala these people had transferred them to my office in the name of donation the men and women i had met that they were bright well traveled well off people if educated people like them behave like this what would uneducated people do but then i was reminded of an incident from my childhood i was born and brought up in a village in karnataka's haveri district called shigon my grandfather was a retired school teacher and my grandmother kishatakka never went to school both of them hardly travel and had never step out of karnataka yet they were hard working people who did their work wholeheartedly without expecting anything from anybody in their life their photographs never appeared in any paper nor did they go up on stage to receive a prize for the work they did they live like flowers with fragrance in the forest enhancing everyone around them but hardly noticed by the outside world in the village we had paddy fields and we used to store the paddy in granaries there were two granaries one was in front of 
and the other at the back of our house. The better quality rice which was white was always stored in the front granary and inferior quality which was little thick and red was stored in the granary at the back. In those days there was no communal divide in the village. People from different communities lived together in peace. Many would come to our house to ask for alms. There were Muslim fakirs, Hindu, the Shians who roam the countryside singing devotional songs. Yellamma Jogathis who appeared holding the image of goddesses Yellamma over their heads. Poor students and invalid people. We never had too much cash in the house and the only help my grandfather could give these people was in the form of rice. People who receive help do not talk too much. They would receive the rice, smile and raise their right hand to bless us. Irrespective of the religion, the blessings was always, May God bless you. My grandfather always looked happy after giving them alms. I was a little girl then and not too tall. Since the entrance to the front granary was low, it was difficult for grown-ups to enter. So, I would be given a small bucket and sent inside. There I used to fill up the bucket with rice and give it to them. They would tell me how many majors they wanted. In the evening, my grandmother used to cook for everybody. That time she would send me to the granary at the back of the house where the red rice was stored. I would again fill up the bucket with as much rice as she wanted and get it for her to cook our dinner. This went on for many years. When I was a little older, I asked my grandparents a question that had been bothering me for a long. Why should we eat the red rice always at night when it is not so good and give those poor people the better quality rice? My grandmother Krishatekka smiled and told me something I will never forget in my life. Child, whenever you want to give something to somebody, give the best in you. Never the second best. That is what I have learned from life. God is not there in the temple, mosque or church. He is with the people. If you serve them with whatever you have, you have served God. My grandfather answered my question in a different way. Our ancestors have taught us in the Vedas that one should donate with kind words, donate with happiness, donate with sincerity, donate only to the needy, donate without expectation because it is not a gift, it is a duty. Donate with your wife's consent. Donate to other people without making your dependents helpless. Donate without caring for caste, creed and religion. Donate so that the receiver prospers. This lesson from my grandparents told to me when I was just a little girl has stayed with me ever since. If at all I am helping anyone today, it is because of the teaching of those simple souls. I did not learn them in any school or college. Now this is the end of the story. Do you like it? Then comment it. Subscribe my channel. Bye bye.